Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Sarah Osell, and I'm a Senior Marketing Manager at GE Digital. I'll be your moderator today for this conversation about turning data into action. We'll show you how with a real-time report and dashboard generator, Dream Report. Today, we'll explore the benefits of digital reporting with key types, get a demo, and explore how Dream Report's easily configurable dashboards can help you improve performance to meet operational goals. As with any time we present, we may discuss product information today that is subject to change and should be used for information purposes only. Please take a moment to review this safe, safe harbor disclaimer. All right, before we dive in, I'd like to cover some housekeeping. On your screen, you should see the four buttons shown at the right side of this slide. Click the orange chat bubble button to submit questions for a Q&A, which we'll answer at the end of the presentation. You'll see a blue paperclip icon where we've placed related content, including our Dream Report product data sheet, some product update information, as well as a customer story of how the City of Chandler leveraged HMI SCADA to ease reporting and EPA compliance with Dream Report. Through the purple mouse icon, you'll find a link to request a demo, and please feel free to book a meeting with our sales team through the green calendar icon button. And if you have any issues with your um, with our platform today, just refresh your browser. Browser. All right, I'd like to get this presentation started by welcoming Jimmy Felice to the screen. All right, thanks, Sarah. Um, as Sarah mentioned today, we will be talking about reporting, and you know, one of the key things with reporting, it is really a critical uh, component now if you do have any digital transformation initiatives. If we start uh, looking at uh, reporting needs in, in our industrial type markets, um, really they're needed for a variety of reasons, whether it's manufacturing or process industries, uh, infrastructure, whatever um, it happens to be. You know, technically uh, in some industries such as life sciences, or we see this a lot now in the water industry as well, reports are actually required for compliance. They need to be submitted to the regulating bodies on a regular basis, whether it's for validation reports, water quality reports, or other um, you know, various uh, regulatory requirements. Also, depending on some geographic regions, we, uh, you'll also see often even uh, things like building management applications um, require uh, reporting really to track things like CO2 emissions or other um, resource utilizations. Another key uh, reason for reporting is in the manufacturing industry. We see a lot now where, again, we talked a little bit about digital transformation, um, you know, and some of the journeys some of our customers are on. You know, really reports are one of the first level of analysis that are required to help run your business. You see a lot of data getting logged nowadays, um, you know, a lot of historians, you know, like you know, where data is getting pulled from the OT layer, um, you know, and, and really that's just data until you do something to transform it into information. You know, so a lot of reporting needs in the manufacturing industry are really around helping identify things like bottlenecks, efficiency issues, quality issues, or even just being able to see a trend that, uh, you know, something is starting to trend downward that might need some action. You know, to really um, to help you with these types of initiatives, you know, reporting again is really key as you transform that data. And, um, you know, the other area that we do see a lot or, or even just when you're trying to solve a specific problem, you know, whether it's, um, you know, things like uh, unplanned downtime or other things like that, um, you know, and you want to find out what happened, you know, often, you know, being able to take that historical data and, marry it with other pieces of information from different systems, you know, really helps you um, often troubleshoot uh, or improve processes. You know, so ad hoc reporting as needed for a specific issue is another kind of key uh, area that they're used in. Uh, in terms of just other uh, different types of reports and things like that, you know, some things like uh, are a little more complex. You know, if you start thinking about things like electronic batch records, as an example, you know, being able to take information from OT systems, business systems, uh, you know, historians, relational databases, you know, a lot of the information is often kept in different systems. You know, so being able to pull data from those different systems and create 
these rich reports. Um, you know, so you can uh, start to again improve your business um, is a really key thing. So this is an example of a little bit more complex report. Um, you know, another area that reporting is really beneficial in is alarming. You know, so while it's uh, you know they're a little more simple in some cases, um, you know they're really key to help uh, really your help your uh, operators focus on what's important um, for, in terms of alarms and things like that. So, you know, really what we're trying to do when we start looking at things like alarm reports again, is we're trying to transform from, you know, more complex um, uh, or simple reporting systems, sorry. I mean, you know, so things like, you know, these basic alarm reports, but really what you want to do is transform it into, um, something that's a little more rich in terms of context, you know? So as an example, going from a simple tabular report of alarms to something that's a little more easy to consume and identify issues like uh, things like uh, which alarms are occurring most often, which ones take longer to solve and things like that, you know, by being able to get those type of insights, it can really help improve your alarm philosophy. Um, just some other benefits of um, digital reporting. You know, if you start thinking about kind of how things have transformed over time, you know, often in, in the past, it would be paper reports. And in some industries, these paper reports are still used. So being able to move from a uh, paper-based system to a, um, you know, basically an all digital, no paper system is really also beneficial from the perspective of how often it takes, how long it takes to kind of go through the data and review it, you know, flipping through an 80 page report as an example, versus, you know, looking through it electronically and being able to interact with it. You know, you can go from, you know, two days to 20 minutes or things like that, just to, in terms of, you know, the review time and things like that. And not to mention, even just from a simple perspective, um, the, the amount of paper that we used to use or used to use um, to deliver these reports, um, you know, being able to save just on that is uh, beneficial in a lot of ways. You know, so if we start looking at, you know, what are some of the reporting options traditionally, you know, a lot of people still use uh, things like Microsoft Excel, you know, which are great, you know, for manipulating and working with data, you know, but however, you know, doing things like reports isn't so simple. Um, and, you know, it's not necessarily easy to template and things like that. You know, obviously we talked about the paper-based approach, um, which, which isn't ideal. And there are also a lot of, you know, relational database type reporting options that are used in the industry still. You know, however, those are really time consuming and, and really don't have that out of the box functionality to connect to things like OT systems. So today, what we're gonna do is talk about Dream Report and um, talk about how it can really help you uh, meet those operational goals. So now I'm gonna hand it off to Richard Kay um, from the Ocean Data Systems um, Dream Report, and he's gonna give us an overview on how um, we can help you with your reporting needs. Great, thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> So again, I'm Richard Kay with Ocean Data Systems. We are the developers of Dream Report, the product we're talking about today. And we're also a longtime partner of GE Digital, uh, really helping D GE's customers uh, achieve their digital transformation goals with this uh, smart, intelligent, easy to use reporting and dashboarding solution. So let's talk about what Dream Report is. Dream Report is reporting for the automation world. It is not a business type tool, as Jimmy said, it's not an Excel tool. It is a purpose built tool to make the most of all the data that you and your customers are gathering across the plant, uh, make sense of it, make it actionable and uh, get value out of it. So let's take a look at what makes Dream Report different from traditional and business type reporting solutions. So first of all, open connectivity to all the systems that you have in a plant, whether it's talking directly to your uh, PLCs, your Simplicity and iFix and HMIs that you have running your SCADA systems, be able to grab real-time data, being able to look at historian data. And it's more than just being able to connect to that prophecy historian, 
but rather to understand the nature of historian data, which is very different to business type data. And as such, you have to uh, really process it differently and, uh, and, and interpret and understand uh, that time series data. And of course, data doesn't exist in a vacuum in a plant. There's always other data sources that you want to correlate non-process data sources with your process data. Uh, maybe you've got data in a lab limb system in an Oracle database or an analyzer in the lab that you want to bring data in from a CSV file or something like that. So being able to bring it all together in this uh, common reporting platform. It's an easy to use product, and I think the reason for the quick learning curve is that it's not a programming tool. It really is a simple solution for complex reporting. And, and you'll see as we go through these slides, how we really take away the complexity of doing these industrial and process calculations uh, because Dream Report has more built in and ready to go. So IT folks are welcome to use the product. We love to have, to have IT involved, uh, but really the target user for this is your instrumentation tech, your process control engineer, maybe a quality person, a maintenance person who wants to build these meaningful reports and dashboards. And it is a very scalable system. I mean, first and foremost, we're an industrial reporting solution, but we're more than that. I like to think of Dream Report as a uh, industrial information system. So. Industrial reports, first and foremost, that's the core functioning of the product. It doesn't end there. Interactive dashboards, management level business type dashboards uh, included in the package. And then Dream Report itself is a data server for other systems. So we can take the raw data from the process, add value to it, aggregate the results, and then send it back to your HMI and your SCADA systems as well. So where does Dream Report fit? Uh, it pretty much fits in every industry. It's certainly not a vertical solution for any one industry, although as we'll see on the next slide, we do have functionality built specifically for different industries. Uh, and then of course, there's common reporting needs across all industry, whether it's getting a handle on up and down time, equipment utilization, getting a handle and understanding your energy usage in the plant, whether you're in a pharmaceutical or a water plant or a nuclear facility, you want to see how your assets are performing up and down time. So, uh, certainly in compliance reporting, uh, regulatory reporting, the must-have reports that Jimmy was talking about earlier on, and then, of course, all the performance and, and other types of reports that really make the most of the data that you have in a plan. All right, so let's uh, talk about some of the type of functionality that it is built for specific industries. Uh, SPC, statistical process control. If you're a, say, discrete manufacturer or any kind of manufacturing plant, you might have an SPC initiative where you want to take the data in your historian or manually entered uh, data and show it in the context of statistical process control. Life sciences, uh, electronic signatures, batch type reporting. Uh, maybe you're in a heat treat uh, environment and you've got set point analysis or thermal uniformity surveys that you need to do. Uh, so really a lot of functionality that uh, certainly has come out of certain or built for certain industries, but then can very easily also be applied to other industries. A lot of interesting cross-pollination uh, with this, this functionality or these different functionalities. So, it's up to you what you want these reports to look like. They could be very graphical, traditional tabular type reports, maybe a, a dashboard, uh, something that's very unique to a process, or maybe it's a template that has to conform to a certain uh, look and feel. We give you a lot of starting point examples and template reports, but really it's up to you to understand who the end user is and how they want to see and, and how you should contextualize that data. So let's take a look at the quick uh, quick workflow of how Dream Report works and what it does along the way. <clears throat> when you create an application, a reporting application, the first thing that comes up is a little wizard that says, what do you want to connect to? There's really two types of data sources, uh, existing data archives. So these are your historians, your HMI log files, your SQL databases. Uh, so the data is already being collected and stored by some other system, and then we'll do the reporting on top of that or we can connect, or not or, and we can connect to real-time data sources, grabbing live data from your HMI, from your PLCs at the moment of report generation. But it doesn't end there because let's say you did need to record some data uh, and so you can report on it and maybe you don't have a full historian or maybe it's just a small OEM that's bundled Dream Report in with their uh, equipment. You can then have Dream Report log the data as well. We have a nice little built-in data logger that then can be used to log that real-time data and then used for reporting. Certainly not meant to be a replacement for a full, you know, purpose-built historian, but for small applications with a handful of tags, absolutely use the Dream Report data logger for that. Then you're going to spend all your time in the designer studio where you're going to lay out, configure, and design your reports. 
the designer studio is a graphical, you know, what you see is what you get kind of environment. It can be set up uh, and as a standalone system or a true multi-developer uh, configuration where you can install studio on different computers, work on a common project, check reports in and out, lock them while you're working on it. It's a very well uh, uh, laid out and robust multi-user environment if you want to go in that direction. Once you've configured your reports, then for every report, you tell Dream Report how the report is going to be generated. If it's automated, it could be scheduled daily, weekly, monthly, uh, whatever interval you want. Uh, it could be event triggered. One of the secondary benefits of being able to talk to the control system and get real-time data is we can use real-time events to trigger reports. Like when you hit a predetermined uh, uptime on an asset or a bit goes high at the end of a batch and trigger a batch report. And then we have several interfaces for on-demand reporting. And then the last piece of this is to specify the output format. And we, as you can see here, we support multiple formats and multiple formats simultaneously. So you could have a document of record, a, a non-changeable PDF report, as well as a web version of that that's interactive. Uh, and then also you specify how the reports are going to be distributed, uh, stored locally on a network share, posted to an FTP server, emailed, uh, so very flexible. And then, as I briefly mentioned earlier on, Dream Report has the ability to take this aggregated data, these calculations and metrics on your report, and serve them out to other systems through OPC. So Dream Report itself is a data source that you can then feed back into your iFix or Simplicity HMI, if you will. So being able to access all your data is key. It's very important to be able to get to data wherever it is and then correlate it in a common reporting platform so you can really make sense of what's happening in a plant with your data. So Dream Report includes over 100 communication drivers. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of uh, different automation platforms shown there. We'll certainly focus on the on the GE products. Uh, but it's not just uh, automation uh, platform specific. All your open protocols, so OPC, if you want to go directly to a PLC or a OPC UA or MQTT, let's say. Maybe it's a Excel spreadsheet that somebody's entering data into every day, and you want to use Excel as a source of data for your reports. Uh, and then within the GE family of products, uh, native drivers for the simplicity HMI, historical values, alarms and events, uh, real-time values coming in from the HMI, from I IFIX. Uh, probably most of our GE customers are using with a prophecy historian or the GE historian for both historical data as well as alarm and event data. And these are all purpose built where we'll expose as much as possible from these uh, data sources. And Dream Report allows you to do manual data entry. So you might have visual checks, uh, some lab samples, operator comments, and you want to bring this all together along with your operational, your process, your lab quality data into this common reporting platform. So data is just that, it's data. And I'm yet to find a customer who says, we don't have enough data in our plant. But what they do say is that we can't uh, make sense or it's hard to really utilize and refine and make sense of all this data. So this is where this part of Dream Report, I, I like to think of this as the unsung hero of Dream, Dream Report, is this rich library of statistical functions and metrics, all focused at industrial and process reporting. So you might have an energy meter just recording raw kilowatts. You want to do a cost analysis. What's it costing to run an asset? Well, we have a cost calculation module where we get the rates and tariffs. We'll talk about this a little later on. Uh, analyze the meter usage over time and come up with a, a number of val with a value. You know, kilowatts to an accountant means nothing, but dollars and cents means something else to them. Or maybe a production plan or a maintenance person is not interested in zeros and ones. The machine is stopping and starting. How many times does this uh, machine on average uh, run during a week? What's the mean time between failure? What's the percentage utilization? So all of those are built-in calculations and metrics ready to go to take that raw data you have and then feed your reports. And again, it's all about contextualizing the raw data and bringing it to the forefront in the reports and dashboards. So that's all on the configuration side. Uh, what do your end users see? Well, I like to think of two classes of users. Uh, let's say the passive user who just knows they have to have reports and the reports automate, uh, they get emailed to them, maybe they just spit out on the printer or get stored in a network share. And it's kind of a hands-off approach to reporting and dashboarding. And then you've got the majority of the users who actually want to interact with the system, review reports, compare different time periods, uh, interactive dashboarding. So to provide that functionality, 
we uh, encapsulate all of that in the Dream Report reporting portal. So this is a browser-based portal uh, factored both for desktop browsers and mobile devices that let you let you actually do a lot of different things with the Dream Report system. First of all, review reports. If you've got automated reports that are firing off at the end of a shift or a day or a batch report, if you open up the browser and click on that uh, report name, the most recent report will come up. But as you'll see on the right panel there, it maintains a history of reports. You can go back and look at reports from different periods. You can do ad hoc reporting, either just by dates and times, or you can come up with your own uh, levels of uh, parameters that you might want to filter. In this case, it's an alarm and event report, filtering by date range, filtering by priority, by um, wildcard search. So it can be as interactive or as simple as you want. It could be a dashboard, a live or a semi-live dashboard that updates periodically. Something might catch your eye, and if there's a hyperlink on there, click on it. Show me the raw data behind that calculation. Show me a quick chart of the data. Copy that data off to a CSV file. So what you couldn't do in a, in a PDF, a static document, now it's all brought to life through the web portal. And you can even bring content from other systems, other dashboards, other video feeds, documents, and mix it in with content that Dream Report is producing. And the last piece of this is a very interesting technology we call the Notifier, which is a collaboration tool which allows users of the system, let's say I'm reviewing a batch report and I see an excessively high temperature on that last batch that ran. I could create a new message and send it to my team, uh, attach, uh, click the link to attach the uh, report or the dashboard to the message, have them check it out. Uh, if somebody's online at the time, the message will float up on the screen and say, you've got a message from Richard or from Chris or whoever sent it, and review the message, review the uh, report. Uh, and so you're not only collaborating, but you're also driving accountability because now the data just doesn't exist and it goes away. Somebody's reviewed it. They want you to take action. They want you to look at it, and there's accountability involved now. And it doesn't just end at reports. I talked earlier on about our dashboarding technology. I like to think of these business or management level dashboards are maybe a few levels removed from the, the real time operations of the plant, uh, slicing and dicing and stuff that managers like to do on lots of historical data. The dashboarding, the dedicated dashboarding engine does that for them as well. All right, we're gonna look at some, let's say industry specific type functionality. Uh, First one, life sciences, food and pharmaceutical. Dream Report is a fantastic solution for these industries, uh, especially FDA regulated. Uh, all the tools uh, that you'll need, say, to build a 21 CFR uh, Part 11 compliant reporting uh, solution. And so what makes it uh, an ideal solution for that? The concept of understanding batch, what's a batch, you know, understanding how to report over a batch. Uh, Role-based security, who can do what? You know, security is obviously very important in every industry, but especially uh, when it comes to um, food and drug manufacturing or processing. Uh, version controls, all the things that the FDA is, FDA is going to require in documentation. An audit trail of who's doing what, who had a failed login, who manually entered data, uh, what did they enter? Electronic signatures on report. And these are really unique features uh, in Dream Report. Typical applications, batch and CIP reporting, validation reports, pasteurization, let's say if it's a pasteurization report in a, uh, in a dairy plant, uh, really the list is endless. As I mentioned, batch reporting is a big part of Dream Report. We can uh, interact, say, with a prophecy batch system, or maybe you're just going straight from the PLC. We can capture a batch ID, a start and end time. And then the concept of reporting over a batch, whether it's in a trend or a table or a chart, is all native to every object. Uh, SPC, I briefly mentioned earlier on, uh, Dream Report has a great little add-on module that lets you take your data from wherever, whether it's from your iFix logs or your historian or man even manually entered, and add control charts, SPC control charts to your reports, histograms, uh, X bar and R charts. We enforce the Western Electric SPC rules. You can highlight if something has gone out of, you know, violated a rule, but it doesn't end there because with it, with Dream Reports uh, reporting data server, we can now write that back to the HMI and now you can activate a an SPC alarm. Okay, so we're grabbing the data, we're doing the SPC processing and then it notified back into the HMI. And this gives you a couple of extra tables and all the SPC, uh, probably the most commonly used SPC metrics. Uh, 
So it could just be a control chart at the end of your production report. It could be a com complete uh, SPC dashboard with where you can look up different specs on products, analyze different uh, parameters, change time periods. Uh, so it, it, it all depends on, again, who your user is and what their needs are from the system. Equipment, up and down time, uh, uh, performance reporting. I mentioned earlier on, we've got these metrics to take the raw data and come up with the calculations. You put them together and assemble them however you wish in your reports. And maybe it's even used as an intermediate step before you say, "I'm all right, I need to work with maybe a purpose-built equipment performance uh, module or, or uh, product, say, from GE. But you've got the raw da data in your historian. Let's start taking advantage of it right away. And then you say, okay, we do need much more granular understanding. And, and so then we'll maybe move to a purpose-built tool. Or maybe Dream Report gives you everything you need. But as I said earlier on, also you can trigger reports when you hit a predetermined up and down time. Uh, and you're really letting Dream Report in, in interrogate and understand your data and then take some action for you. So here are a few examples of this. Uh, it might just be a simple scorecard type report, a traditional OEE type report or dashboard, or using our, our, our dedicated dashboarding tool, just a nice big display maybe you have running at the end of a production line showing you how you're uh, operating, you're running on target, below target, uh, just fine. It's all how you want to present it to your users. Another area of uh, opportunity or, or of interest for a lot of our Dream Report customers over the last year or two has been alarm reporting. If you're, if you're familiar with the ISA 18.2 standard, it's really a very practical standard about understanding your alarms and events and your alarm loggers, helping you as an, as an end user or a manufacturer understand the impact of alarms to your, your process and your operation. And it provides a very meaningful metrics. They spell out these various uh, alarm KPIs and metrics. So in our last release of Dream Report, we've added all of these in. Where we already had quite a, a significant number of these already, but we've really fleshed out all of the uh, metrics spelled out in the 18.2 standard. So looking at alarm floods and operator response times and when did, uh, you know, how many nuisance alarms, all of those things that really can help you focus in on what's important. But again, since we're not just a point alarm reporting tool, there's you know, perfectly nice uh, alarm reporting tools out there, but that's all they are. They're not a plant-wide reporting solution. So if you can show these metrics in the context of quality data or process and production runs or any other uh, information uh, that I've talked about so far, now it adds so much more value than just going to a reporting tool, uh, an alarm reporting tool, I should say. And again, automatically deliver the results, notify people when certain conditions occur. And we do the metrics, just like with the, H with the SPC calculations, feeding them back to the HMI. We can analyze your alarms, apply the 18.2 metrics, and actually then feed that back so your operators can see maybe we're getting floods, alarm floods in certain times of the day that they might not see if they were just looking at all the raw alarm and event data. And this is an image of uh, an example Jimmy showed earlier on, really showing all the raw alarm and event data, but with the various metrics and drawing your attention, look like looks like that's an excessively long time to respond. Your eye probably went straight to the red text. You know that's actionable information now that you need to work with. Energy reporting, I uh, briefly mentioned this earlier on. The cost calculation module allows you to define rates and tariffs for different times of the day and different times of the year for your various utilities and then apply that to your meter values. And you can set up different times of the day, you know, special days in the year in the US, let's say it's last Thursday in November, obviously that's uh, Thanksgiving, so you might have a special rate then or on May 1st, a different rate. So you that module is where you define all of that. And then you even have uh, uh, um, grade-based or rate uh, grades. So let's say you, you, your consumption starts to go up too high, your utility provider might actually charge you a higher rate at that point. You can model all of that in Dream Report, and then what you get out of it once you apply it to uh, your calculations is now just a report, not just a report in kilowatts or kilowatt hours, but rather analyzing the usage over time based on those rates and really giving you an understanding of what it's costing you to run an asset or, or, or a whole plant, if you will. All right, last couple of slides here. Uh, Dream Report is, is a very uh, well thought out security model or user management model. 
Obviously, security is important more so than ever right now. Uh, a lot of it is driven by FDA regulations and uh, probably nuclear as well where it's used. But all of these can apply uh, in any environment. So uh, integrated with Windows, so your domain or Active Directory security at the user or the user group level. Uh, ex that security extends to all the different components who can uh, electronically sign documents, who can get into studio, uh, but not maybe configure reports, but not change communication drivers, uh, who which reports or uh, can a user get into on the web portal. So it's very granular. Uh, the whole environment can switch language based on who logs in. Uh, we talked about the version control earlier on. If somebody makes a change to a report, if you've enabled this feature, FDA requires that an, a, that then gets incremented, the version number has changed. But not only do we track all those changes, we also have the ability to roll back. So maybe somebody made an unauthorized change to a design of a report. You can review those changes and roll back if necessary. Audit Trail gave some examples earlier on, who sent a message to who, who had a failed login, all of that can be tracked. And then electronic signatures on reports. And so this is uh, all really important to uh, many of the industries that we serve. Okay, so that was the Dream Report product overview, and hopefully, uh, really see how uh, it can be applied, where it can uh, bring value, and really help you along your digital transformation journey. What I'd like to do now is switch gears and actually let's get into the product. So I'm going to bring up a, uh, a running system, and on here we have a, uh, a GE system, it's uh, running, what are we running here, iFix, the historian is running in the background. And so I'm going to use that as the basis uh, for some reports that and dashboards that we'll look at briefly in this demo. So what I'd like to do here now is I've gone into my Dream Report studio. So this is an actual studio uh, that's running, uh, I launched just before we started the presentation. Uh, this is my demo project, so it has a lot configured in here already. But this, the workflow, as I mentioned earlier on, you start a new project, the first thing that comes up is a communication driver wizard that asks you what do you want to connect to. So here I'm in the, uh, the GE folder, and all the various products that we have drivers for, uh, this is where we would uh, set them up and configure, uh, configure them. Uh, if I was, say, creating one to my historian, I would come in here, I would uh, bring up the link to see what how we're connecting to it, if it's, this is running all locally, so it's um, all I, I don't have to point to another machine in my case now, or it could point to a historian running elsewhere. Uh, what parameters? And now again, we're exposing as much as possible of, of all the great features that are in the, in the, in the historian. So for instance, sampling modes. Uh, let's say I want to extract data in 15 minute intervals instead of looking at raw data. I could then say, right, 15 minutes is what, 900 uh, seconds. I want to filter out or only bring in good quality data. Uh, I might, if I'm in a different time zone from where the historian is, I might need to shift my times uh, times appropriately. So as much as possible, we're exposing information about or, or features from the historian into our, our driver. Once you've got that, you give it a name. Maybe I'll call it ghist, um, call it my ghistorian underscore, I said 15 minute averages. And so I've made a connection into that server and I've added it to my list of configured drivers. Or maybe I want to go straight to my iFix real-time values and then Dream Report can log those values. So I've already made a couple of these over here. So once we're done, I could start reporting directly on that historian. But we have a very, a very interesting concept here called data models, which allow you to take tags from, let's say you've got a big historian, 10,000 tag historian, of which maybe 300 are important for reporting. Instead of you browsing those tags and down, and down that structure all the time, you can make a data model and organize it. So the iFix demo has a juice plant and a water plant. So I could go out to my G historian, um, say the raw data, and maybe I want to find my speed, uh, speed tags. And once I've got whatever tags I want, I can grab a bunch of them. So you do this once up front, and now I could then say drag them in here. I can put them under a certain folder. So I did that already. I created two subfolders. I um, simplified the names so that the names aren't so big. And so the nice thing about data models, not only can you organize data as needed for reporting, 
not only can you alias tags that are more meaningful to your end user, but you can also pull data from different systems. So you might have uh, an energy management system that's running elsewhere or a uh, data coming from some arbitrary CSV file and you want to drag those points. So you can really organize data from all these sources into this unified data model. Once that's done, and you can have many models if needed, now we're ready to start building reports. And I'll just put a couple of little objects on this report. So I'll make a new report here. We'll just call this our GE demo. And this is not going to win any awards for looking good. I just want to show you the workflow. Uh, let's say this is a report that runs every day at uh, just after midnight. So let's say five past midnight, this report is going to run. Uh, it's the format, let's say, will be a PDF document. I want to email it to whoever it's going to be emailed to. I want to set up here, maybe it's a web, as well an interactive web report. And who's authorized to generate or view this report so we could pick users there. That's the general setup of the report. Uh, maybe I want to apply a template, a layout uh, template. If I have any of them set up already, I could then just apply the template with my header, my footer. And now I can start putting content on the report. And um, I'll just really put two objects in here. Maybe I want to summarize some data. So I'll put an automatic statistic table. So we'll quickly drop that up here and uh, browse for some tags. So it wants to know what tags I want to report on. Well, in this case, I can go to my data model that I had made, my GE history. And let's go to my juice area, and I'd like to get um, any temperature tags. And so I could grab a few temperatures, maybe put them there, and maybe in my water area. I also want to get some uh, temperatures from there. And uh, I'll just pick a few. And once we've selected our tags, over what time period is a batch-based report? Is it time-based? I'll do this for a short period, let's say over the last uh, 30 minutes. Um, and what do I want to look at? I want to look at the max, the min, timestamp of min, timestamp of max, and the average. And as I said, I'm not going to do too, uh, any formatting or anything. I can change colors if I'm out of spec and uh, format you know, display types and, and all the rest of it. But here I'll just say uh, data summary. Okay. And just format as needed. Move on to the next object. Um, Maybe it's a trend. If it were a line chart, maybe I want to make that chart interactive. And so again, just browse to my uh, data source, my historian. I then go straight to the whole historian or again to my, mo my data model. And maybe in this case, I want to get my uh, well, well temperature there. And I want to show the moving average over the last hour. And again, just build up the trend, the report this way. So that's the workflow of putting together reports. Um, what I'm going to do now in the last minute or two is just switch over to the web portal. So this gets created when, as you build and add reports to a project, it adds them to the running portal. I'm not logged in with any security, so I get access to all the reports. But if I had security enabled, only reports that were enabled for me or my user group that I belong to would show up here. So we could start off with um, just a basic, let's say, of, uh, batch report. Maybe we have a list of batches that have run in the juice plant. And so in that case, I will go out there and um, let's see, do we have... Okay, so we're switching over to our batch reports. Maybe I want to look at a summary of batches that have run juice batches, or actually in this case, it's making some other products uh, over some time period. It's maybe since 11 o'clock this morning, since yesterday. And so it's a nice little summary here. I'd like to know more details about this batch um, 827-10. So there's a hyperlink that we've added to this uh, this list box or, or this table. This now drills in and finds us. So this could be coming from the prophecy batch, which is recording all the process data. Uh, this is using our cost calculation module. So it, it's an energy meter. So it took the value of the, the meter at the end of the batch uh, minus the start. And how did it come up with 35.4? Because we used the counter calculation. Well, hey, there's a, 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 um, a hyperlink on there. So let me actually see the usage. Uh, maybe I'll bring up a quick chart of the usage over the batch. Any alarms and events, maybe I want to look at my tank levels. Min, max, and average tank level. So it pops up. Maybe, again, a quick chart. Copy the data off to a CSV file. 
any key parameters we might want to look at. And then maybe we want to go deeper to a, uh, let's say, an ad hoc trend where I could go into the into this historian and maybe grab a couple of flow meters and refresh the trend. Turn pens on and off, whatever it is that you might want to do with this data. So there's a pre-built report that I then went deeper into do more ad hoc reporting. Maybe I want to look at a, uh, let's look at one or two little other examples, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, machine uh, states. I don't know if I have any of these here. How's my machine been running? Maybe it's more of a discrete manufacturing uh, environment. So this is my machine has different states. And um, I want to look at whenever it's running, how long it's running for, and then roll that up over a production run. Two more reports, and then we'll wrap up the demo. Uh, alarm analytics, we talked a lot about this earlier on, uh, looking at that example. So this is a report that happens every day, let's say at what the end of every shift, or maybe it's current. So this goes up to the moment the report generates. Uh, and again, this is all alarm and event data in our uh, alarm logger or our historian, but it's just different ways of applying the 18.2 metrics to it. A different table, this rolls up all the raw alarm and events into number of occurrences. So maybe our maintenance folks want to focus on the big hitters. So this conveyor seems to be having a lot of alarms over there. So definitely want to look at that uh, issue. So just an example of a typical, uh, but very useful alarm analytic. And then the last thing, let's just go in here and look at a couple of, of web reports. One might be a trend. And so we want to use this to maybe do some ad hoc reporting on our historian. So we'll go back to our, where's our GE history. I'll choose a time period, maybe since the start of the hour. I'd like to search for some uh, level tags. Let's just see and uh, search for them. And it finds any level tags in the different groups. And I'll pick four of them and update my trend. Okay. And hopefully we have data there. Okay. So. All right, so we have our raw data. You see, in this case, when you have a lot of data, you might want to use a different uh, retrieval mode instead of this is raw. Maybe I want to pluck the values out once a minute. Maybe that's more than enough. And if we can take advantage of those advanced sampling modes in the history, your reporting obviously is going to be a lot faster instead of bringing out everything. But it brought it all out. You zoom in on this. Show me the uh, raw data behind these trends. And I'd like to look at these three. And there's all the raw data coming out. Quick min, max, and average. Copy it off, save it to a CSV file. And then the last one, and then we're done. Let's look at just a quick uh, live dashboard of process data. So if you notice, these numbers will be updating, I think, every few seconds. So it's not a replacement for an HMI by any means. It's a dashboard. It's doing metrics. It's calculating them and then periodically updating and then giving us that level of interactivity that we might want uh, on the raw data. All right, so that wraps up the demo portion of the presentation. Let me hand it back over to Jimmy. All right, thanks, Richard. And um, just sort of, uh, just to summarize, uh, hopefully you saw the great capabilities of Dream Report. It really does help uh, simplify re um, the reporting options that you do have. Um, reporting can be complicated, but you know, leveraging something like Dream Reports can really help make those complex reports. Um, come out very easily. So with that, uh, we are going to go and uh, take some of the questions that you guys have entered.